Hello guys, this is Tinrail, and today I'm going to be doing something slightly different. I'm showing you guys how you can use CCAN, the Kerbal Com uh, the Comprehensive Kerbal Archive Network, CCAN, to set up the majority of the mods that I'm using for a Kerbal Space program if you guys are interested in setting up a situation similar to what I have. Currently, I'm running the 64-bit version with like 50 mods or more. And it's kind of been a hassle for me to deal with. I tried CCAN earlier in the year, and it didn't work that well for me. But right now, it seems to be going pretty smooth, and it makes it a lot easier to manage all of these mods. Now, you do not need to have the 64-bit version of Kerbal to get set up with this. But if you would like to, in my mod list, I have a link to the forum post that shows you how to manage that. But if you're okay with using OpenGL, you can get going with all of these mods and have the nice clouds and everything else pretty simply. So the things that you're going to need to get started are CCAN, which I'll provide a link for in the description, as well as my CCAN file, which has a link which has all of the mods loaded that I'm using for the base for this. There are some things that aren't currently in CCAN, such as the three New Horizons downloads that I'm using. This could change in the future, and if it does, I will make a note of it in the description and update the link to refer to a newer version of my CCAN file that already has these included. But you can see I have this additional zip files folder. In here are the core elements and also some extra things if you guys are interested in taking it just that one step further. New Horizons is something that has to be added after CCAN is set up to add the planets for the new system. The cloud layers are optional, but the New Horizons version of the clouds includes clouds for all of the stock planets as well as the new New Horizons planet. The vanilla overhaul from New Horizons improves the textures and look of all of the original planets. And then I also prefer to have a higher resolution skybox so that while well, I'm staring out at the universe, which is most of the time I'm playing Kerbal, it's a higher resolution and it looks a little sharper. I also have Astronomer's Visual Pack as a separate thing because all I really want it for are the auroras and the lens flare. And again, this is something you guys don't need to do. And you may see it is available in CCAN, but it has a lot of dependencies that we don't want, so I'm installing it separately. In order to get the lens flare going, you need to do a little bit of fussing around with files using the Unity Asset Explorer, and that's, again, optional, and I'll be covering that at the very end. But if you fire up CCAN, it will go through and update the repositories. If you're running it for the first time, it may ask where you have Kerbal installed, if you're using Steam, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, Kerbal Space Program, or if you're using another install somewhere else, wherever you've installed it. It can also ask if you want it to update or refresh the mod list every time you open it, and those are preferences that are totally up to you guys. But to get started, you can do File, Install from CCAN, and then locate the Tinrail New Horizons Base Mods CCAN file and open that up. And then you can see it's going through and it's starting to download all of these mods. I think it's going to be downloading about 43 to 45 mods. So this is a lot easier than going to 43 to 45 different web pages, downloading the installers, extracting them, and all of that. So I will come back to you guys in just a moment, although this is going pretty fast. Okay, guys, so you can see that all of these mods have installed successfully. And if you go to Manage Mods, you can see there are quite a lot that are associated with CCAN right now. And it's no wonder people are always posting in the forums about crashing with like 150 mods that they've selected because there's just so many to choose from. Uh, feel free to go through and add any that you might be interested in. Um, you can click on them and follow them to the homepage and see what it's all about. But I would caution you against just installing a whole bunch at once because if one of them causes a problem, it'll be more complicated to figure out which one. So uh, install them one at a time, see if you like it, and if there aren't any problems, keep moving forward. But now we're basically done with CCAN for now. 
if you open up CCAN at a later point, it'll show you mods that have updated and you can update the mods. They can see uh, Copernicus has updated itself since last night. Okay, now that we have CCAN set up for the initial part, what's left is to take care of these additional files. So if you have downloaded these, I'll have links for them in the description again. Let's start with New Horizons. So we'll just add New Horizons to this list here. And that's all taken care of. Now the Vanilla Overhaul. Let's add that. It comes with a texture replacer because it has some small PNGs that Texture Replacer will go through and overwrite the original textures for. It frees up a couple hundred megabytes of RAM by instead of just swapping out for the better textures, it also overwrites the original ones. So you're going to want to copy both of those into your game data directory. And there will be six files with the same names in Texture Replacer. Those are just the stock ones. They probably haven't changed, but they could have with the new version of Texture Replacer, so you can just skip those files. Now, at this point, you can probably run Kerbal in 32-bit without using OpenGL or anything fancy right now, and it won't crash. At this point, it should be using probably about 3.2 to 3.3 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty close to the 3.5 limit that I encounter. Uh, that's when it crashes for me. And you'll find the longer you play Kerbal, the more memory it starts using up. But when we back out here to the custom cloud layers, this is what will really add the RAM usage is the clouds. And this is set up so that you don't need to install environmental visual enhancements because it has its own dependency files with it. And so you can just drag those into your directory as well. And now this is probably what I could I would consider the uh, core feature set for the mod install that I use. Everything else is just extra on top. If you do want to have auroras, that's something that you can find in the Astronomer's Visual Pack under Step 4 Optional Features in Essential Features, Auroras. It's two steps. One of them is the configuration file, and the other is the textures. And since we're using Planet Shine, we're going to go with Planet Shine. And we'll just overwrite that folder with that one configuration file. Back out to step two. And I really don't notice a difference with the auroras between the 4K and the 8K, except for the amount of memory it will use. I would recommend 4K, and even if you if you want to make, go even lower, you can use something like GIMP or another paint program to just make them 2K resolution textures. And I, I don't even notice a difference from that because they're usually so far away. But with that, you'll have your auroras also already set up. Let's back out of there. I also like the skybox. Now these have to be put into Texture Replacer in order for them to be used. So if you go to Texture Replacer, default, this is where you're going to want to move these textures. So if you drag these over there, this will be a higher resolution skybox. And now before I go on to the lens flare, which is the most complicated part of this, I'm going to talk about uh, OpenGL. If you tried running the game right now with ksp.exe, it would crash because it would be using more memory than the 32-bit is able to handle. You can fix that by creating a shortcut to ksp.exe. And if you right-click and go to Properties, you get this little window. There's a target area here that you can add commands that can also be run for Kerbal. So here you can do hyphen force hyphen open gel. And this will cause Kerbal to open in open gel, which will use less memory. In addition to that, I like to use uh, dash 
pop-up window because I'm a very big fan of alt tabbing. Kerbal doesn't like alt tabbing and it can crash the game. This makes it run in a borderless full screen window so that it doesn't crash when you tab out to something else. And also since I upgraded to uh, AMD video card, I've had problems crashing without using this. Uh, Unity keeps trying to resize the window to 1080p from 1080p and it doesn't make sense to me, but this fixes it. So you can apply that and then you should be good to go uh, at full resolution, 1080p textures, or 1080p resolution with high resolution textures. I end up with about 2.8 gigabytes of RAM to start for this. So I get five to 700 megabytes of bloatware, memory leaking. You know, it's enough to play Kerbal for a couple hours before it'll get close to crashing. You will notice, however, that when you're using OpenGL, you will lose the anti-aliasing and it will look really jagged. That's something that you can change in the control panel area uh, for your video card. Uh, here you can see I have an AMD. I can add an application for a Kerbal and I can change it to enhance or override. You can do the same exact thing with an NVIDIA graphics card. Just make sure that you're not using the, you're changing the global settings and you're adding a per application. So it's just changing it for a Kerbal space program. And so you can bump that back up and everything will look smooth. There are some people in the forums who say that they lose shadows with OpenGL, but that's not something I've ever experienced with either AMD or NVIDIA. So I'm not sure if they're using Intel graphics or what may be the case for that. But now if you want lens flares, this is what you have to do to set that up. Okay guys, Unity Assets Explorer is a program that you can use to explore Unity Assets, which is where Astronomer has stored the lens flares. Let's see, where were those? I think they're in Essential Features, yeah. So fourth step, Essential Features, Lens Flares. Now I'm a fan of the J.J. Abrams, but you guys can pull out whichever one of these you might want. It's the same exact process. The SF files used to be different for KSP and the 64-bit version, but since we're not going to be overwriting the assets file with this because of the way it's changed since then, it doesn't really matter which one you use. So you can just pull out this shared assets folder from the zip archive and put it wherever you want. And then open up Unity Asset Explorer. Now this uses a relative location for everything. So if I go and I open assets, I'm going to want to pick the one that I just pulled out of the astronomers. So I'm opening up shared assets 10 from the astronomers file. And then you just want to go and locate sunflare.tech and have, uh, well, I guess you don't need to have anything checked down there. But you can right click this and extract this file. And what that does is it will create a folder for the asset, shared assets 10, that contains this flare texture. And you'd think since it was a texture that you could use texture replacer to overwrite it instead of having to edit the asset files, but I wasn't able to get that to work. Between when Astronomer released this pack and the current version of Kerbal, this changed from shared assets 10 to shared assets 9. So since the folders are all relative for Unity Asset Explorer. You can just change the folder name from Shared Assets 10 to Shared Assets 9. And then you want to open up Unity Asset Explorer again. And this time you're going to be opening the file that Kerbal is loading by default in the assets. That'll be in KSP data. And since it's changed to 9, we want to open up 9. Now here you can see there's a sunflare text. We can import this file from the original format, which is what we extracted. And since we've changed the name of the folder, that's where it's going to be looking for this. So we can do import this file from original format. Done. And now you will have the lens flares. As a side note, guys, after you've added the flare, if it's not showing up in game, it can be a little quirky. Uh, what I would recommend doing is saving it as an asset file and keeping it 
named shared assets nine and just saving it in a different location and then copying that file over the one in your ksp data directory and that should work for you if it's not updating just by editing it where it is there are a couple things that are not in ccan or part of this additional thing that you guys can go look at my mod list and get if you want they are um quick hide which I use to hide some of the menus in the toolbar. It, for some reason, has a dependency for toolbar, which adds a separate toolbar, which I wasn't a fan of, so I was just installing that separately. Simple Science Fix, which lets it automatically stores a crew report in the capsule when you take it, so you don't need to exit the capsule, store it in the capsule, enter the capsule, take another crew report. And Soundtrack Editor. If you've played Kerbal as much as I have, and you're already familiar with all the tracks because you've heard them for hundreds of hours it's a nice thing to install as well so i hope this helps you guys out and you're able to get things going if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and i will catch you guys in later episodes